let's bring in David DeRoche with the National Defense University joining us now from Washington. David, good to see you. All right, so this news of Ukraine potentially taking more territory in Bakhmut, it produced some pretty stunning pictures of Russian troops trying to run away, at least one trying to surrender on camera. But is this something that could change tomorrow? Do you see Bakhmut still just going back and forth for months longer? Yeah, um, Bakhmut is strategically insignificant. Um, Russia has made it significant. They've tried to uh, portray it as a sort of Stalingrad uh, in large parts for their domestic audience. But there's also an internal dynamic between uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of the Wagner Group, and the regular Russian Ministry of Defense. Originally, the idea was that the Wagner Group was going to take it. This was going to be their victory, and they would use this to show uh, the Russian people that they're more effective than the Ministry of Defense. So you see this infighting on it. Um, I think that uh, this is likely to be temporary. Uh, it appears that the Ukrainians are basically bleeding the Russians in what is a strategically insignificant position, and it looks like they're doing it more effectively now than uh, they have been in weeks past. All right, this head of Wagner, Yevgeny Prigozhin, mm -hmm. He has been outspokenly criticizing the effort thus far. He's been calling President Vladimir Putin rude names openly. I mean, he's like the only guy in Russia allowed to criticize the war effort, at least thus far. But do you see mm -hmm. that changing? I, I haven't heard him call Putin rude names, but he certainly has spoken to the Minister of Defense in terms that would put any other Russian in jail. Um, I think as long as he produces, he can do this, but you know it's important to note that um, this isn't a true military, uh, private military company. This is an arm of the Russian state, uh, a private right. military company in every other country. Um, they provide the logistics, they provide lift, and they don't do the fighting. What you're seeing here is a company that does the fighting, but is reliant on uh, the Russian military for logistics for shells. And I think what he's doing publicly is trying to get a bigger piece of a limited logistical pie from the Russian Ministry of Defense and claims that he'll be more effective if he gets that. Um, it's, it's, it's a high stakes game because, you know, if, if um, Bakhmut falls, uh, he's going to be one of the casualties. You know, the last couple of days in particular have been a very weird and bad look on a number of fronts for Russia. When you look at the totality of what's happening now, what does that tell you? Um, well, the first thing is the importance of unity of command. So um, I think that when we know what happens to the 72nd separate brigade, one of the things I think that we'll find is that there was confusion because they were operating next to a Wagner group, but they weren't communicating. And so it's possible that Wagner withdrew and 72nd didn't notice it. And then they realized that they were in a vulnerable position, so withdrew in that panic that you saw in the video. It's also possible that they were just defeated and Wagner didn't know. But the bottom line is when you have commanders that are uh, not coordinating with each other, you have a very ineffective military effort. And uh, fortunately for the Ukrainians, that's what we seem to be seeing here with the Russians. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing to see these struggles playing out publicly. All right, it's, David. It's almost comic. Yeah, I mean, I can think of a few rude words to describe the scene there. It's incredible, especially considering how tightly Russia tries to control every bit of information. David, always excellent to talk to you. Thanks so much.